Hey, it's Jason Creel. Wanted to talk to you about a couple different things. One, rainy weather. It's been raining here. Today's Wednesday. Rain Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So, obviously, a problem for those in the lawn care business. A couple things you can do. One, you keep an eye on the weather and you plan your week out accordingly. So if I knew, you know, when it rains Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you're you're just you're in for a rough week. But let's say it was only going to rain on Tuesday. What you can do is you can try to get all your Monday yards done plus, you know, whatever extra you can get on Tuesday. Go go ahead and do some of your Tuesday yards on Monday to get ahead of schedule. Uh, that way when the rain comes on Tuesday, you're not as far behind. And then and that might even mean bringing in extra help on Monday. Whatever you have to do to try not to let the rain get you too far behind. Uh, and I try to just communicate with my customer. I don't sit there and call every customer when it rains. I just think we communicate. Uh, when you first meet a customer, you say, you know what, I'm going to be cutting your grass on Tuesday. Obviously, if it rains on Tuesday or Monday, we're going to be a day behind, but we're going to get to you as quick as possible. Most people are reasonable and understand that. You have a few that they don't understand that and you may have to get to them quickly just so they don't call and bug you but um, you can get ahead of schedule and then too if it, you know if it rains like today it just poured down this morning I mean it, it's probably too wet for anybody to cut grass today but if you have other things to do like trim hedges or you know I don't know plant flowers what whatever I'm gonna be out fertilizing you can still make something of the day so that it's not a total wash then I want to also talk to you about a couple of customer, you know, these aren't actual customers I have in mind, but these types of customers I have dealt with that I think are a challenge for us in the lawn business. So one that I'm thinking of, okay, so picture, and I've got a customer in mind, but anyway, you've got the customer whose next door neighbor has the perfect yard, okay? So if you, if you know what I'm talking about, sometimes there's some people out there and they, they hate the invention of the zero turn mower. You know, they, their belief is that grass was made to be cut with a 21 inch self-propelled push mower. And they like to cut theirs three times a week, you know. And so the fact that you come pulling up with a big 700 pound grass eating monster just, just gets under their skin to no end. Now you don't cut their grass. Obviously they would never hire a lawn professional because they, they can do it better themselves, which I don't disagree with. I mean, out, you know, if you want to spend 20 hours a week in your yard, I don't doubt you can do it better. You know, it, I, that's, what, that's what gets to me sometimes. People think, well, so-and-so just does his own yard. Look how great it looks. And I'm like, yeah, he does. He's got one yard that he's that in zero hobbies as all he does is mess with his yard you know we're, we're dealing with hundreds of yards you know it's like go ahead and put a few hundred more yards on him and see how well he's able to keep it you know it's, it's, it's anyway that bothers me a little bit more than it should but the uh the neighbor that when you pull up of course what are they doing the neighbor's out working in the yard because that's all they do you pull up with your gas guzzling zero turn mower and they give you that look just like I can't believe you're about to, you know, put that on on that delicate turf, and uh, and and don't dare go over the property line. You know, they want to make sure because they, I guarantee you, they're peeking out the window, looking out the blind, sitting on the front porch, glancing up while they pull the two weeds in their yard. They want to make sure that you keep that big machine off of their grass. And uh, and 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 here's the problem, I whatever that person's never going to hire you they they hate lawn businesses they hate zero turn mowers and and they you know they don't have any other hobbies the problem is and this is what i've experienced sometimes they influence your your the next door neighbor who is your customer okay and, and just for fairness sake some people that work in their yard all the time are, are fine and they just they're nice people and they just like working in their yard that's totally fine i i did the ones who just look at you like you're you know awful for riding a zero turn mower not they, they don't want to understand anything about business you know they understand that if i'm out here pushing yards all day i'm not going to make any money okay so bigger faster more powerful equipment is very important to making money 
So, but when they begin to influence your customer, then that becomes a problem. Whether they, they hate you or, or like you, doesn't matter. But so, for example, let's say your customer has neglected their yard for the previous 10 years. Neighbor works in his yard all the time. Perfect yard. You know, everything. Aerates it, uh, overseeds it in the winter, whatever. I mean, just does it all. Top dresses it with soil so it's perfectly level, compost, sand, whatever. He's got it looking perfect. And, uh, but your, your neighbor, you know, could care less and just, just says, oh, so-and-so's yard looks beautiful. You know, and, and so they hire you and want to know after two months why your yard, why their yard doesn't look like their neighbor's yard. That becomes an issue because, I mean, sometimes, sometimes not. Sometimes they say, well, yeah, I say, well, your neighbor's yard looks great. And, oh, yeah, he's out there all the time, water's, all, you know. And, uh, but sometimes they want to know, well, why didn't mine? I mean, he's not even, a, you're supposed to be the professional. He's not even a professional and his yard looks so great. You know, and that's what sometimes is, is difficult, especially from a weed control standpoint when the customer, they don't understand that it's sometimes a, a tag team effort here. I mean, the homeowner does have to put in some effort, okay? Like cutting your grass occasionally or having someone cut it. You know, it's like, we only cut our grass once a month whether it needs it or not. Well, that that's not gonna be sufficient to having a great looking lawn. You know your neighbor who looks great, he cuts it three times a week. I'm not saying you gotta cut it three times a week, but if you would knock the dust off the lawnmower occasionally and go cut the grass, it would make a huge difference in the appearance of your lawn. So anyway, it, it's just, uh, so that that's one customer that's a struggle. Not the next door neighbor, they never hire you, but the customer who is heavily influenced by the next door neighbor with the perfect lawn. The other one, and this may be the worst customer of all time, and this is somewhat of a stereotype, but it is the former lawn care business owner. Good luck with that guy. I had, I remember this one time, we went to this uh, apartment complex. I was working with a friend of mine. Not, not a nice, not a nice area here. And not a nice apartment that everybody's wanting to live in, okay? Just say that. And this guy comes out and he's just start, you know, stops you and he wants to just go on and on and on about the humongous, wildly successful lawn business that he used to run. And I, I was like, oh, okay, well, that, you know, that's great. That, that is that is great. Oh, wow, you had that many customers. Oh, wow, y'all must have been really busy. Great. Oh, wow. You know, and just... And then, but I was like, something's not adding up here. You know, I'm, I'm just, my, the glaring question is, well, what happened? You know, I mean, what happened now? I mean, you know, it's Tuesday afternoon at two o'clock. Are you, what, what are you doing now? You know, so anyway, sometimes the former lawn care business owner, and maybe I'll become this one day, they can be a challenge, you know, because and again, it's not everybody, but some of them, you know, you're never going to do as good as they used to. 